for you. I thank God for Redeemed Christian Church of God. And I thank God for what you are doing for the gospel, for the kingdom of God. May God bless you and give you what you can never give yourself. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, all right. Now, now, wherever you are, stay with me because God is really about to touch you, bless you, and keep pressing the share button. Don't stop and just spread it and let everyone participate because there is something powerful about to happen to you. Now, I'm, I'm going to read a verse of scripture very quickly. If you have a Bible, turn with me very quickly. I'm reading from 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4. 2 Samuel 4, 4. And it says, And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame at his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Israel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Let us pray. Father, thank you. This is your word. This is your spirit. It's your time. Let every child, every boy, girl, man, or woman that hears the sound of my voice be quickened by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let no one be the same. Do what you know how to do best. Let everyone that hears the sound of my voice be touched by the power of your spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the bound be set free. Let the lost be saved. Do what man cannot do and take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. You know, I want to speak to you today on what I have called Mephibosheth. That is my message. That is the title. Now, the first thing I want to do is to tell you the meaning of that name, Mephibosheth. What does it mean? Now, that name means, in one word, you can spread it out a little, but in one word, Mephibosheth means shame. That's what it means, shame. You see, when you, when you, when you look at this young man, you see a man that was surrounded, he was trapped. This man was restricted by shame. Trapped, surrounded, restricted by shame. It is a terrible thing to be in this condition. It was like a siege. He was right in the middle of it. Now, now look at this. Let, let me show you this. That's what we're just reading. Imagine, he was just five years old. And just in one day, his father died, his grandfather died. The same day. And in that same day, the nurse that was hired to take care of him was trying to run for safety with him. And, and, and as, he, as she ran... Mephibosheth fell from her hands. And when he fell, the Bible says he broke his two feet or his two legs and he became crippled. Now, now you just see it from one sorrowful event to another. From one shameful, shameful event to another. This was a prince. Now he is crippled. By Jewish tradition, a crippled person cannot live in the palace. So, automatically, he had to get out of the palace. Now, at this time, there was no relative that could take him in. So, he was stranded. He was stranded emotionally, stranded. I mean, a child, five years old. Nobody to take him. Nobody to keep him. Nobody to help him. Nobody. Oh, my goodness. What kind of thing? Now, there are some of you watching right now who are going through exactly the same thing. Your name can be Mephibosheth right now. And in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, what is it that has caused you shame? That has caused you embarrassment? That has brought you low? 
that has made you less than who you are. Everywhere you turn, it has been embarrassment. Everywhere you turn, it has been shame. You know, there are some of you hearing the sound of my voice right now. You see, in the African tradition, when a woman gets married, she's supposed to have a child. But you've been married for 15 years, no child. And so, it's bringing you shame. You cannot mix with your colleagues, with your friends, with people you know, with people who know you. That there, there, there are some of you watching right now. That, that, that's it. That's it. Your wife is feeding you. And you know, in the African tradition, it, 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 it is a taboo for wife to feed a man. But that's what's happening to you because life has pushed you, has pressed you, has surrounded you, has trapped you, has restricted you to a point where your wife has to put food in your mouth. And, and so shame has come with it. You, you, you are now bound with shame. You are in a situation where you don't know what to do. Shame is now on you. And you are wondering, is this the way I will live? There, there are some of you here. You, you are a lady. You are 45 years old. And no man has ever come to you to say, I would like to marry you. It's a shame. You see, people, people shame you. People look down on you. You have a degree, but no job. There are friends you can't go close to because they're going to ask you, where do you work now? But you cannot say, I work here or I work there. It's like you are surrounded. It's like a siege. Oh my, my goodness. That is why you are watching this right now. If I be a man of God, in the name that is above every other name, that siege is going to break today. That siege is going to break today. That siege will break today. If you believe it, let me hear your amen like fire. Oh my God. I, I see God breaking, breaking, breaking that siege. It is time. You cannot remain like this. God is about to move you from what you are who you are, where you are, to where God wants you to be. It is your day. It is your moment. You are not watching by accident. Keep pressing that, that share button. Keep pressing the like button. But I'm telling you, you are not watching this by accident. The power of God is upon you. It is your time. It is your moment. It is your hour. Now, God wants to do something that man cannot do for you. If you believe me, lift your hands and shout a hallelujah. Go ahead, lift your hands and shout a hallelujah. Yes, my God is good enough to do for you what man cannot do for you. This was the condition of this young man. You know, when you read Proverbs 15, 15, the Bible says, All the days of affliction are evil. All the days of affliction are evil. And many of you are going through evil days. And these evil days come with shame. And it's, it's like you are clothed with it. You, 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 you have been suffocated with it. You have been oppressed with it. You, you are, you, listen to me. I tell you this. If I be a man of God, this is your time. This is your hour. It is your moment for God to break this thing from your life. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. It is time to be broken free. To be broken loose. To be broken free. To be broken loose. To be broken free, to be broken loose, to be broken free, to be broken loose, to be broken free, to be broken loose. You will not remain like this. For the God of heaven has come. It is your time of visitation. This God is a good God. I, I Listen, I am excited. I am excited because the hand of God is mighty upon your life. Oh my God, go ahead and praise God. Come on, go ahead and praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling you. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Now, when you, when you look at that same second Samuel, but this time chapter 9, and we are looking at, I think, I believe it's verse 1. Yes, Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, and, and the, the Bible says, And David said, Is there yet a, any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? You know, as I'm speaking to you right now, I'm looking at your family bloodline. 
who is and who was in your family bloodline that God can, because of him, show you mercy? God can, because of somebody in your bloodline who knew God, who had a relationship with God, who God can look at and because of that person, show you mercy. Mercy can still come. Shame can go. Mercy can come. I said, shame can go. Mercy can come. Immediately shame goes. Mercy comes. When mercy comes, shame goes. And that's exactly what is, what is about to happen. Who is in your bloodline? If there is nobody, Jesus is in your bloodline. And because of Jesus, God will look at Jesus and remember the sacrifices he made because of you. The Bible says uh, that we must not forget all his benefits. The benefits of the cross. He will remember them and do something for you. Listen to me. Listen to me. David said, is there anybody in Saul's house that I will show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now, he thought there was nobody. But Ziba, one of the old servants of Saul, stood up and said, sir, there is one man. Yes, Jonathan, your friend, had a son. His name was Mephibosheth. And uh, I know where he lives. He lives in a place called uh, Le Le Lodeba. 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 Do you know what Lodeba means? Lodeba means a place of nothing. A place of nothing. Lodeba. Lodeba. Could you imagine a prince living in a place of nothing? Did you know that you are a prince? Especially if you're a child of God, you are a prince. Now look, look at the shame of a man that lived in the palace, now living in a place of nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing to show for it. He was almost like a slave. I, I, don't, I don't want to go into the name of the man who, with whom he was living. Because the meaning of that name of that man is sold. Something sold, someone sold. So it's almost like they sold him. But I'm, I'm telling you now that God is about to visit you. And you see Jesus, the, the, the word of God says, God looked for a man to stand in the gap. Probably you are that man. If nothing else, probably God can look at you and because of you, have mercy on your family. And look at you and because of you, generations yet unborn, if Jesus tarries, will not carry the same shame. You will not live under the same shame. Struggle from one struggle to another struggle, from another struggle to another struggle. It is time to be set free. God had remembered Mephibosheth. And I, I, I declare, I dare to say to you that as God remember Mephibosheth, God has remembered you. I said, God has also remembered you. I don't know your name. I don't know who you are. But I said, God has remembered you. God has remembered you. In your pain, God has remembered you. In your shame, God has remembered you. In your rejection, God has remembered you. In your accusation, God has remembered you. God has remembered you. It is your time. It is your moment. It is time that God who remembered you will take you out of Lodoba. 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 It is time to come out of a nothing into something. From, from nobody to somebody. From the bottom to the top. God has remembered you for good. It is your time. Lift your hands and give God the glory. Come on, clap your hands and give God the glory. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. There are some of you, you are watching, you are listening to me right now. You have been used. You have been abused. You have been misused. You have even been accused. And that is the condition where you are in Lodabar. And God has remembered you and is about to pull you out. Give you a restoration that cannot be measured. That man cannot measure. That every shame that surrounded you, every shame that covered you like, like a clothing. Ah, I, I, we cheer it. We cheer the shame from your life. We cheer shame. Let shame go. Let
Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. If you believe me, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Oh my God. I command shame to live your life. You will not live a life of shame. You will not live a life of shame. You will not, I repeat, you will not live a life of shame. Your hour and moment has come. God has visited you. There must be a restoration that you can talk about. That God can give to you and people can look at you and give glory to God. Your day of restoration is here. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, it is your moment. You know, my mind goes to some five years ago i was preaching right here in our church right here at word of life and you know as i was preaching i saw a lady at the altar she was praying quietly but i saw she had tears tears rolling down her cheeks and she had money in her hand she put the money on the altar she knelt there crying and praying silently i noticed some people tried to to, to pull her to get her out this was about five years ago and i told him no leave her alone Leave her alone. Let, let her be. Let her be. And they left her there. And she stayed right there throughout the service. I knew within me that she was bitter of soul. Something was wrong. Something was heavy. There was a heavy thing on her life. Now the next Sunday after service, she asked if she could talk to me for a few minutes. And I said, I, I, I don't mind. I would listen to you. I'm tired, but I would listen to you. And she began to share with me. Oh my God, it's pathetic. She said, sir, for five years, I have consistently applied to get into law school. I have tried and I have tried and I have tried. It has become shameful. You know, to the point where I can't face my parents. I can't face my friends. I can't face my acquaintances. I can't, I can't face anybody. It's now a shame. It was so bad. That's why I stayed at the altar. That's why I was crying. I was crying to God. All the offering, all the money I had, I put it on the altar. And I was saying to God, if you don't do it, just kill me. If that's the best you can do for me. He said, take this shame from me. Again, I repeat, there are some of you who have suffered this shame. It has been with you like a siege. Like, like, like an impossible wall, spiritual, unseen wall that surrounded you. You couldn't move to the right. You couldn't move to the left. You couldn't turn your back. You couldn't go in front. You, was, you were right in the... It was like a siege. But this is the day for siege to break from you. The siege is over. You will not be under the power of any siege. Shame is not your portion. I said shame is not your portion. I repeat it. I said shame is not your portion. She said when she left church she went home still crying. She went home still praying. And she said about 5 a.m. That day, Sunday, that was seven days after she started praying that prayer. She kept praying like that. And she said, about 5 a.m., there was a knock on her door. And when she looked and opened, it was her cousin, a young lady like herself, who came in and knelt down and said, please forgive me. Please for she said, forgive you for what? The, the young lady said, you've got to forgive me. He said, look, I've got to know what I'm going to forgive you for. He said, forgive me. He said, you're not entering law school was my doing. I caused it for you not to get into law school. She couldn't bear it. Oh, she said, how could you? My own sister, how could you do this to me? She said, I don't have the power to forgive you. God alone can forgive you. She was so broken to hear that her own sister had taken her through this. But God brought a breakthrough and broke this the siege and that is how the siege is broken from your life the devil is a liar he can't stop you the God who saved your soul that same God will heal your body the God who saved your soul that same God will deliver you the same God who saved your soul will elevate you that same God who saved your soul will promote you that same God who who, who, who saved your soul will lift you from where you are and put you where you are supposed to be if you believe me lift your hands and shout hallelujah I said shout hallelujah 
you know as i'm talking my mind is going to isaiah 61 verse 7 the first sentence there he said for your shame you will get double oh my god i like it for your shame you shall have double and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion oh my god you they shall rejoice in their portion whatever is your portion you are going to rejoice in it that's why joel was saying in, in joel 2 25 uh, where god spoke he, he, oh, oh, he said all the years that the conquer worm the caterpillar the locust the palm worm has eaten he said i will restore i will restore there is a mighty mighty spirit of restoration yes taking the place of shame in the name of Jesus. Let me get back to this lady. It's important to tell you that this happened on a Sunday. She talked to me on a Sunday. This her cousin came to her early that Sunday morning. On Monday, ladies and gentlemen, she got a letter that has been hanging for five years. A letter that was replied. The very first letter she... Oh my God. How can Africans... How? Why are we this wicked? Why, why? Why don't we love ourselves? Why do we hate each other like this? A letter posted was hanging. Sometimes you wonder how witchcraft does this. They, take that, they, they took that letter to witchcraft, to the covenant, and they held it there for five years. And when that prayer broke loose, on Monday, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the letter came, but it was useless. A letter written five years ago, what are you going to do with it? Who, which institution will admit you with a letter after five years? Nobody will listen to you. It means nothing. It, has, it doesn't carry any weight. She looked at the letter. She looked at her life. And the pain was so heavy. There are many of you in pain. In shame. Dejected and rejected. Oh my God. I don't know. How human beings. Can be so. Inhuman. How a human being. Will do this. To another human being. It's obsolete. It was useless. It, it had no, it was of no use. But the day of restoration has come. Because now that girl is free. Even marriage, she couldn't get married. But I'm telling you, a year and a half later, she got engaged. And about six months after she got engaged, she got married. And gradually, she has gone to that law school. She has been able to do what she craved to do for years. Look, your shame is being replaced. I said your shame is being replaced. In the name that is above every other name. Your shame is being... You, and they say, you don't serve a dead God. You serve a living God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the Mephibosheth. Shame is lifted from your life. Let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Wherever you felt shame. God has taken shame from you. God has lifted shame from your life. You will not live under the yoke of shame. You will not live under. Your, your, your junior ones look at you. You know. A brother came to me. His mother died. He did not know that his mother died until the burial was over. When he asked one of his younger ones, but how could you people do this? And they said, if we told you, what would you have done? They said, you don't have the capacity. You don't have the, you, there's nothing you would have, nothing, you wouldn't have made any difference. So nobody thought about it. Look, look, it, it, it's not going to be so for you anymore. The days of shame are lifted. They are lifted from you in the name that is above every other name. The days of shame are lifted from you. Come and praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The days of shame are lifted from your life. 
The devil cannot stamp shame on your life and make you a permanent candidate of shame. There are many of you listening to me. You've gone from one shame to another. There are sicknesses that have been on you. Some of you, oh my God, as a sense it. For up to 33 years, you have suffered an affliction to the point where you stink, you smell, and people avoid you. Even within your family, they, 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 they run from you. God sent me to you to tell you, those days are over. I don't know you, but I stand as a servant of God in the name that is above every other name. And the way you know that I'm a servant of God is because it's going to come to pass now. I speak into your body. I speak into every tissue, every vein, every blood vessel, every cell, every nerve, every organ, every bone and marrow. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I said be healed in the name of my answer from your head to your toe. Be healed. And then I'll set you loose. The power of God set you free. Set you free. Set you free. When, when, you, look at, when you look at Genesis 41 verse 14. God remembered Joseph. Took him from prison and brought him to the palace. When you look at Esther. Chapter 10 verses 2 and 3. God remembered Mordecai and brought him to the palace. Oh my God. I, 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 let me tell you, there is a breakthrough with your name written on it. I'm telling you, I believe it with all my heart that you are not watching this by accident. You are not with me by accident. The power of God is mighty upon your life. I repeat, we don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. We serve a God that can still heal. We serve a God that can deliver. We serve a God that can bring breakthrough. That can make impossibilities possible. We serve a God that can take a man from nothing to something. From nobody to somebody. We serve a God that can lift you and nobody will bring you down. We serve a God that has capacity to make anything happen. We serve a God. We serve a God that is alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Let me declare to you, because I know miracles are happening as I'm speaking right now from your head to your toes. That there are people with kidney diseases being healed. There are people with liver problems being healed. There are people with, with arthritis being healed. There are people with migraine headaches, back pain. There are people with, 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 with hand trouble, leg trouble. There, yes, I, I, I sense it. There are about 10 persons hearing me. And one of them, incidentally, is young. You, you are just about 35. But you had stroke. You had stroke. There are people who had stroke. There are 10 of you. And, and there, there, are, there are three among these 10. The doctors have given up hope on you. In fact, it looks like you're, you're not going to make it. But I, I, I declare to you, you will make it. You're coming out of that hospital. And we are going to hear your testimony. We're going to hear the good news. I speak that angels will lift you up right now. If there be God in heaven, I'm telling you, angels lift you up right now. You are healed from your head to your toes. In the name of Jesus, they said you couldn't walk, but you are walking. In the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, there is a particular man. You're going to walk out of the hospital. You're walking out of it. You're walking out of the hospital in the name of Jesus, and you will give glory to God. We serve a living God. There are ten of you healed of stroke. God has touched you. There, 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 are, there, are, there are four amongst you. Your speech is already perfect. You are, you are talking perfectly. You, you can coordinate your words. You can speak perfectly. I sense it. I see it. It has happened. Begin to praise God for it. Begin to rejoice. There are healings. There are breakthroughs. There are miracles. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. God has brought restoration to your life. Come and praise God somebody. Restoration to your life. 
whatever was in your bloodline that held you captive, that put this shame, this clothing of shame on you, the shame is lifted. Whosoever caused this shame, the shame goes to them. You are free. You walk out of shame. You walk out of embarrassment. You walk out of discouragement. You walk out of frustration. In the name of Jesus, I sense the power of God lifting you up. Lifting you up. Walk out of it. Miracles are happening everywhere. I, I, you know, I want to talk about colonials for a moment. God remembered him. When you read Acts 10 from verse 1 to 4, we begin to look at Colinius, a Roman centurion. God remembered him from verse 1 to 4. In fact, an angel said to him in verse 4, he said, he said, he said, he said your arms and, and prayers have come unto God as a memorial. The word memorial means remember, to remember. God has remembered you. That's what the angel was saying. What is, why did God remember him? You see, remembrance is divine. It is God that remembers. But man can activate remembrance. And there are three very clear specific things that God shows us in verse 2. We begin to see how Cornelius, he wasn't even conscious of it, triggered restoration. Remembrance of God. Number one, the Bible says he was a man that feared God. He feared God. There is a huge difference between a man that fears God and a man that doesn't fear God. People who don't fear God are arrogant. They are proud. They almost feel they are God. And it is happening in Nigeria right now. There are men and women who feel like they are God. They don't say they are God. But they talk like they are God. They act like they are God. They deal with people like they are God. Because they suddenly find themselves with so much power. Some of them with so much money. Some don't even know what to do with it. Why people cannot see food to eat. There are people who don't know what to do with money. Oh, one low, they are in Nigeria. They are in this country. They act like, who cares? They live the way they like. But I'm telling you, God is going to shock you. Between now and the first quarter of 2022, get ready for the shocker. God is going to come and shock you. It will surprise you. You will know because you forgot, you forgot the God factor. You forgot the God factor. Do you fear God? If you fear God, you will deal with human beings as human beings. You will remember that every human being is as human as you. You will remember that every human being who dies goes to six by six. You will remember that you came from dust and you will go back to dust. You see, you will be reminded do you fear God? If you fear God, you flee from sin. Do you fear God? If you fear God when you do wrong, you will admit you are wrong. Do you fear God? <laughs> I'm telling you, if you fear God, you will rearrange your life. Just in case you didn't fear God, you have a chance to fear God. The beginning of fearing God is to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Come in contact with this living God. By salvation. That's why Jesus died. He said who forgiveth all thine iniquities. I don't know who you are. But I, let, let me lead you in that prayer right now. Say Lord Jesus. Come into my life. I receive you. As my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me my sins. Make me a brand new person. I want to serve you from this moment. In Jesus name. He feared God. Did you know that Job feared God? Oh yes he did. Now let me quickly add. That the fact that you fear God. Does not insulate you from trouble. 
<laughs> Trouble comes to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. There are many of you watching me right now. You're wondering. You say, but I fear God. Look at what I'm going through. Yes, you will go through. You will not remain in the valley of the shadow of death. You are coming out of the shadow of death. God will take you out of the shadow of death. I promise you that in the name that is above every other name. If God be God, he will not leave you in the shadow of death. You will come out of it. I'm telling you, it looks impossible. It appears impossible. But God deals in impossibilities. Where man power ends, now there God owns the start. Those of you who don't understand that, now worry I come from. There is a place called worry. Wherever you are watching from in the world, just try to trace this my small town, little place where I come from. This is the kind of English we speak there. But you know, I'm, I'm really I'm excited about you. I see the move of God on your life. God will not forsake you. If you fear God, you will come out of it. You will shock your enemies. <laughs> Those who laughed at you, they will come and laugh with you. Those who refuse to celebrate you, they will join to celebrate you. God can take anybody from anywhere and make him anything. That is the wonder about God. I fear I will. Person will not fear God. I'm sorry for you. Fear him. Because he can do things that will puzzle you. There are people that I grew up knowing to be loaded with money. Some of them are dead. But there are young people who don't even know who they are today. Their money is nowhere. Their children, nowhere. Everything, nowhere. Fear God. That's the key. Do what? Fear God. Fear him. If you fear God, the God whom you fear will step in. And it will cause your enemies to fear you. He's an incredible God. He's a mighty God. He's a living God. So, Cornelius feared God. Number two, Cornelius was a great giver. He gave. He gave. He gave. There are people who try to convince us today that we don't have to give. Don't listen to them. If you listen to them, you lose your life. You destroy yourself. You finish yourself. Yes, give. It may not make sense to anybody, but give. Give. There's a story I tell here in our church in Word of Life. A young man who is a member of one of my friend's church in Lagos. He didn't own a car, but he had a strong impression that God wanted him to buy a car for his pastor. I know there are people who will be watching this right now who are going to criticize me. Please, please, make you leave me up. Not be me up. Now, what do you see at the talk? You know what God said? He said, my ways are not your ways. He, he didn't own a car, but he felt led to buy his pastor a car. It took him two years of saving money, putting it together to buy his pastor a car. He got, he got another brother to join him. He convinced him. The brother started. After about six months, the brother gave up. He said, no, I don't have one. Why will I buy him one? So he said, thank you. He continued. It took him two years. He finally gathered the money to buy a car. He bought a car. And he came to the church. He said, I'm aware that my pastor has two cars. But God said I should buy him a car. And he brought the car to the church. And he presented it to the pastor. And the pastor knew him as someone who don't... I mean, he's, he tracks. He, he, he learns trade at a labor market. Let me just be very plain and specific. 
He learns, you know, is that what they call it? He learns trade. He's learning the trade there at a labor market. He has a boss. He has his, his old guy, his master. So you can see he's nobody. So the pastor wept and said, no, no, I can't take this from you. And he told the pastor, he too was weeping. And he said, no, you will take it from me. He said, God told me to give you. He said, but please do me one favor. He said, I know you have two. He said, try and use this one many times. He said, every time you use it, you bless me. When you use this car, he said, please use it. And the pastor said, I promise you. And he started using it. Another year passed by. And one day he was in his master's shop and he was hearing some people talking close by, speaking his language. And he rushed there. When he got there, he knew what they were trying to do. There was a man from South Korea that was there. And they were trying to dupe him. They had invited him from South Korea to take his money and kill him. And he jumped in and he said, no, it's not going to happen. And he grabbed the man. And pulled him out of the place. They were looking at him. They were, they, they were confused. He pulled the man out. He said, follow me. The man was wondering. He dragged him to the road. He said, please, sir. I don't have the money to, buy, to, to put you in a taxi. He said, we will enter a taxi together. But you will pay because I don't have the money. He put him in the taxi. He said, airport. They went straight to the airport. He said, sir, change your flight. And board your flight now, immediately. And the man did exactly what he said. But as he was about to board, he turned to the young man. He said, can I get your phone number? And the young man gave him his number. He took the number and he boarded his flight. He left. It didn't take long. I don't know, a month or whatever. He called this young man and he said to him, would you like to visit South Korea? And the boy said, look, I would like to visit anywhere. I've never visited anywhere in my life. He sent him money to buy, uh, to make a passport, to get a visa. And everything. And he bought him a ticket from there. And they delivered the ticket to him. And he flew to South Korea. To Seoul in South Korea. And when, they got to, when he got to South Korea. The, the man took him around his warehouses. He said I own electronics. I own a uh, 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 washing machine. Uh, what they call all these things. Refrigerators. And all this stuff. Uh, uh, televisions. And he said now choose i want to send you about 10 containers free just let them go to you you just sell them and send me my um my capital i don't know if that's what i would call it he said you send me my capital make your profit as you like and take it all he said you did me good you saved my life i would bless you he said listen i'm not going to sign any contract with you he said i trust you if you saved my life the way you did, what am I not going to trust you for? He said, you take the things. He said, I'm going to ship the things for you free by myself. So the man shipped the things. He went back. In a few months, the goods arrived. And he got the goods and he began to sell. To cut a long story short, in less than two years, he, he built about three houses around Lagos. My goodness, he's not a boy anymore now. He's a big guy. Or call him a big boy. He's now all over the place. He's living large. He's living big. God has blessed him. God can take any man, any woman, any boy, any girl from anywhere and make him somebody. And that is how this young man, God turned his life around. Giving can never hurt you. Giving can only bless you. Giving cannot reduce you. Giving can only lift you. Giving cannot bring you down. Give, giving can only take you up. I have tried it for all my years. I've been preaching 49 years. I have not seen giving do me harm. Instead, it has blessed me. It has blessed me again and again and again and again and again. And I encourage you, do it. Do it and be blessed. That's the second thing that triggered off. How God remembered Cornelius. Number three, God remembered Cornelius. The Bible says he prayed always. How is your prayer life? Do you love to pray or you have given up on prayer because you have so many unanswered prayers hanging? God sent me to tell you it is time. We are now in December. 
Yes, I've been saying it the way God told me to say it. God said to say to the people, he said it is de deliver member. Deliver member, deliver member. That is the month of delivery. He said if Jesus can be born and delivered in the month of December, wherever you find yourself, it is your time for delivery. What you carried with you in your womb of destiny, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, this is December. If Herod could not stop Jesus from being born, he will not stop you from delivering what you have carried. You have carried it long enough. It is time for prayers to be answered. Don't stop praying. Prayer is the supernatural link between humanity and divinity. When you look at Isaiah 43 and, and you look at verse 19, God said, I will do a new thing. I like it. I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. I'm excited. But then go to verse 22. He said, but you have not called upon me. You see that? So it's in your hand right now. Then you go to Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. God said, call upon me and I will answer you and show you. Call upon me and I will answer you. I think it's Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Yes, that's what it is. Call upon me and I will answer you and show the great and mighty things which you know nothing about. He said, I will show you. That's what he said. That's what God said. Look at it. Look at, look at Psalm 50. I think it's Psalm 50 verse 15. What does that say? Psalm 50 verse 15. It says, and call upon me in the day of trouble. Many of you, you are in your day of trouble. He said, I will deliver you. God cannot lie. And thou shalt glorify me. I see God giving you deliverance right now. I want you to lift your hands as I begin to pray for you. I pray for that child. I pray for that boy. I pray for that girl. I pray for that man. I pray for that woman. I pray for men and women, boys and girls. Your life is tight. It's like you are surrounded by shame. I pursue the spirit of shame from your life. And I exchange it with fame. God begins to give you fame. I break that thing. I break you free from it. That thing that has limited you. That thing that has made you not to lift up your head. Not to be a man of yourself. Not to be a complete person. I lift that wickedness out of your life. That thing in your bloodline that has put you in this condition. I reject it from your life. I break it from your life. I remove it from your life. I drive it out of your life. I pursue it from your life. I say, go! Lose your grip and hold. Leave that boy alone. Leave that girl alone. Release them. Let them go. The power of God is upon you. That's it. Oh yeah, take it. Wham! It's coming to you. The Spirit of God. The healings are happening. Breakthroughs are happening. The blessings are upon you. Receive it. Receive it now. Receive it. Take it from me. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In your body. From your head to your toes. All over you. Take it now. Now is your time. Now is the breakthrough. Now is the blessing. Receive it right now. 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 Take it in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You are set free. You are healed. You are blessed. Go ahead and begin to praise God with me. I see it done. I see it done. In the name of Jesus. Just go ahead and be praising God. Praise God with me. Thank God for his breakthrough. For his blessings. For his goodness. For his mercies. I rejoice. It is done. It is done. It is done. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Thank God for such a time. The siege is over. You are not ordinary. You are not under any siege. You are not under shame. You are set free. There is restoration. I bless you. I thank God for you. Hopefully some other time. I will come your way again. And let me tell you this. 
please keep using the numbers keep calling keep calling keep calling don't stop doing it keep calling no no if it's jammed you wait a bit you keep calling just keep calling from everywhere wherever you are people are ready to pray for you and begin to share your testimonies of your healings of your breakthroughs of, of all kinds of things that are happening to you here is the hand of God so strong so mighty upon your life I'm sure you shared and you're still sharing and, and all over the place I see you there keep praising God and keep rejoicing for the great move of God upon your life the siege is over for you I bless you in the name of God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit God bless you I will see you again in Jesus name Amen God bless you Christian Church of God with its headquarters in Lagos, Nigeria, situated on number 1 to 5 Redemption Way, Ibutemeta, Lagos. The Throne of Grace Parish, a place where the presence and manifestation of the wonders